In this video, we'll look at the sodium atom, Na. So sodium, it's a metal. You can see sodium metal here. It's shiny. It'd be malleable and conductive electricity. And it's actually a very soft metal. You could cut this with a butter knife. Sodium is a metal. And if we look at the periodic table, we can see sodium right here with the other metals, the blue are the metals. So sodium group one, it's a metal. We have our nonmetals over here on the other side and hydrogen, that's a nonmetal too. So we can see sodium on the periodic table, it's a metal. We can also look at the periodic table here and see this 11 here. This is the atomic number. That means sodium will have 11 protons. And because it's a neutral compound, there's no negative or positive after it. Neutral compound, the number of protons equals electrons. So sodium has 11 electrons. And we can see that when we look at this Bohr diagram here of the sodium atom. So this is one way we can represent the sodium atom. We have the protons in the nucleus here, the positive protons here in the nucleus. The electrons, they're in energy levels or shells around the nucleus. And we can write what's called electron configuration notation to show that. So here we have the first energy level, the first shell. So we write one and S, that's the shape, and it has two electrons in it. So one S, two. Then the second energy level, we have two, four, six, eight. And they're broken into a 2s2 and a 2p6. So we have a total of eight in that second energy level. Finally, in the third energy level right here, we only have one. That's the third, we put three, and that's an s1. So one electron. And this electron here in the third energy level, the highest energy level, this is the valence electron for sodium. When sodium forms chemical bonds with other atoms, it'll lose this electron here and it'll lose this 3s1. That's the same electron we just got rid of, and that means this outer shell, that's gone. Now you can see sodium has two, four, six, eight. It has a full outer shell. The second energy level, it's full eight valence electrons. This is very stable, but we lost a negative charge. So now the sodium ion will have an overall charge of one plus. And we could just write that as Na plus, that's the sodium cation. Let's take a look at the periodic table to help us understand this a little bit further. So here's our periodic table. I've condensed the transition metals down and there's more stuff down here, but we're interested in the top part because here's sodium. Sodium's in group one, it has one valence electron. All of the elements here in group one will have one valence electron, just like sodium. Group two, two valence electrons will skip the transition metals and you can see the trend continues for valence electrons. Remember, these elements here, they're gonna lose that electron, just like sodium when they bond with other elements. So here we can look at the trend for the ionic charge that's formed when the elements, they form ionic bonds. So here, group one, they're all one plus because here's our sodium, they lose one valence electron. These elements lose two valence electrons, electrons are negative, these will all be two plus and so on. It's a very general trend, but you get the idea. The number of valence electrons in an atom like sodium is related to the charge it has when it forms ions. Let's take a look at how sodium and fluorine would form a chemical bond now. So here's a neutral sodium atom and a neutral fluorine atom. Remember the sodium has one valence electron. The fluorine, it's in group 17, sometimes called 7a. It has seven valence electrons. So the sodium will lose its valence electron here to the fluorine. That'll give the fluorine a full outer shell. It has eight in its outer shell. Since we've lost the one valence electron, this shell goes away, and now sodium, it has eight. But sodium, it's now positive. The fluorine, it gained an electron, they're negative, it becomes negative. And because of that, these two, they're attracted to each other because they have opposite charges. This forms the chemical bond between NaF, sodium fluoride. So when we're talking about the formation of this ionic bond here, the sodium, it loses its electron to another element, to fluorine. That forms the positive and negative. Those are attracted. They form a chemical bond. This is Dr. B discussing the sodium atom. Thanks for watching.